What's up, Big Blue? Let's talk about the Giants' free agency signings during the legal tampering period with New York Post Giants beat writer Paul Schwartz. This is sort of like a mini blue rush. As you guys know, it's our Giants show for the New York Post and SNY. Paul, you looking good, my man? Um, I tell you, I, I basically haven't been out of this room you see behind me here for uh, several days. Um, it came fast and furious. You know what the strange thing, Brandon, is? What's that? Doesn't free agency start at 4 p.m. on Wednesday? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like when the league year starts, right? And basically, the Giants have done everything they could and, and spent all the money they have pretty much. And, you know, now it's all bargain basement shopping. And it hasn't even started yet. I mean, it's, it's you know, the league doesn't call it the legal tampering period anymore. Mm. They don't want to call it that. But, I mean, isn't it amazing that at 12.02, you hear you start hearing on Monday, you start hearing some deals get done. And it's like, you mean so you waited till noon and then in in two or three minutes, you got this, you know, four year, 75 million dollar deal. Young, you know, that's amazing. But, you know, that's legal, illegal tampering. I mean, it's it's um, look, the, the NFL on Monday. I mean, a little bit on Tuesday, but on Monday it was just I mean, you know, if you have, you know, eye strain or anything looking at a screen, it is just bonkers and look the Giants certainly contributed to that bonkers quality to the first day yeah I mean that legal tampering period is like its own TV show the first 48 hours of it has been like you said bonkers lots gone down let's start with who left uh we got to get your thoughts on Saquon and Xavier McKinney leaving you know usually it's not about that right it's like okay these guys left let's talk about who they brought in but you're right um, you know, the back page of, of the paper of the New York Post on Tuesday was Saquon, you know, Barkley leaving for the Eagles. That was the big story. Now, Saquon leaving was not unexpected at all. I, I did not expect him to come back. Look, the Giants never offered him a deal this year. You know, they, uh, you know, Saquon and Joe Shane met after the season and there were no terms discussed. Um, I think there was a lot of pleasantries and everyone knew that the Giants were just not thinking about paying a running back the sort of money that Saquon wanted, and um, no one knew if he would get. Well, he got it. Good for Saquon, right? Three years, almost $37 million, I think, what, $26 million guaranteed yep. Yep. for Saquon. Last year, the Giants offered him $23 million guaranteed. So um, Saquon, I don't know if you would say bet on himself by not taking that deal. Um, he did not have a great year for the Giants. But, um, look, he, he is the face of the franchise or was the face of the franchise. It wasn't Daniel Jones. You know, it's not Dexter Lawrence or Kayvon Thibodeau. It was Saquon Barkley. Um, there's no question about it. Um, you know, look, I remember the day, obviously, we all do in 2018 when they took him with the second pick and he was um, the generational talent and the gold jacket. And, um, you know, don't look at him as a running back. He's a generational offensive weapon. Well, that just didn't come out to be, did it? And, and you know, in a lot of ways, Saquon's, 2018 rookie year was his best season. Um, I know he had a few more yards in um, 2022, but he caught 91 passes as a rookie. You know, he was, yeah, um, yeah. you know, offensive rookie of the year in the league. He was a dynamic player. So, you know, seeing him go is, um, you know, I get it. There's a lot of 26 jerseys out there. I get yeah, it. He was yeah. the most popular player after Odell Beckham. He was clearly the Giants' most um, popular player. And um, I don't think it's the wrong thing to let him go, but See him go to the Eagles. If he went to the Texans, I think a lot of the Giants fans would be, okay, you know, God bless you, you know, go, you know, light it up in Houston. Then he went to the Eagles, and which is his right, right? When when you are a free agent and there are 31 teams bidding for you, nobody can say, don't go to our rival. You know, there is no our rival anymore with Saquon. Um, he's going to a good team. He's from that area. He grew up around that area. He gets to play the Giants uh, twice a year. It's a win-win for him, although he did want to stay with the Giants, but that was just not possible. Yeah, and I can see all sides of this, Paul, when it comes to it. Obviously, I'm media now, but the player in me, like you said, if there's no contract offered, he got the guaranteed money, then you got to go. This is the best situation for your family. I get the fan side of it. Well, why would he go to a division rival? I, I've been saying it on Blue Rush throughout the course of the football season. After that last season, Saquon and the Giants owed each other nothing. Saquon could go, and because I remember times when he said how his win-loss record here, 
uh, it was, I believe, like 24 and like 48 or something. It was go, go, go get the money, the memories, and victory Mondays. And what you've seen Howie Roseman do with the guys they've brought in in free agency, Saquon has put himself in position for that. Now, one thing that a lot of people that made a lot of news was the whole Tiki, Saquon, back and forth on Twitter. Do you think he hurt his brand or his image, his reputation even more around with, with those type of fans the way he dealt with the Tiki situation? Look, uh, Saquon clearly was hurt. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. you, you see his, his Twitter. Um, you know, it was a very cursory. Um, for those of you who stood by me, I thank you, something like that, right? You know, you know, Brandon, how many times do we see guys with much lesser credentials than and popularity than Saquon post this long goodbye on Instagram, you know, thank you to Raider Nation or Chiefs Nation or, you know, Bill's Mafia. And, you know, you know, I grew up here and, you know, the thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to you know, the owner and the general manager and the head coach. And it's time to move on. You know, yeah. there was none of that with Saquon, you know, and, and, and look, when he goes to the Eagles and has that first press conference, it'll be interesting to hear what he says. I'm sure he will not be bitter, but I think there's bitterness in him because he wanted to stay and he wanted to make it work with the Giants. And look, they they basically told him, you are not worth what, what you think you're worth to us. So, um, you know, I get it. You know, um, and so, right, Tiki Barber, a guy who I covered his whole career and I like and respect, um, you know, is now a radio talk show host. And he's paid to say things and not uh, parrot the company line. And, um, you know, could Tiki, you know, Tiki is the voice of, you know, Tiki was being the voice of the fans when he's saying, you know, fans are thinking now, Saquon, you're dead to me. Well, some fans are. Some fans still like Saquon, um, you know, you know, I, I would like Tiki to be a little more the voice of the ex-player and yes. let the other yes. on the show be the voice of the fans because they are the fans. Tiki's the ex-player. And look, any ex-player, you are an ex-player, right? You get to go to a good location, to a terrific team. Oh, by the way, the Eagles were 10-3 and three against the Giants when Saquon was there. You know what I mean? So if you can't beat them, join them, right? He just joined them. Um for, for more money than anybody else was giving you. Look, let's face it. If Saquon signed for the same deal with the Panthers, right, you'd say, all right, he went for the most money. He's going to languish in Carolina. They're no good. He's going to get beat up, but he's going to get paid. That's not the case here. The Eagles are good, yeah, right? The Eagles yeah. are one of the best teams in the NFC, you know, right away. And, and they're the best team in the division probably still. You know, you may argue with the Cowboys. The Cowboys don't even realize the free agency started yet. That's the problem. Yeah. You know, the Cowboys <laughs> got to wait up and, and, and start doing some things. So yeah, I can see all, look, it, it, it's, it's a wound right now. And yes, Saquon going somewhere else is, okay, God bless him. Saquon going to the Eagles. Look, I, I, I respect Saquon a lot, and I, I enjoyed covering him as a person in the locker room and as a player. Um, but I bet Saquon is not going to lie that first game before the Giants, before he plays the Giants for the first time. You know, it, I will be disappointed if Saquon gets up there and says, no, it's just another game and I'm happy with this team. Saquon's not going to say that. Saquon's going to say, um, I love some of those guys still there, yeah. but I want to run 300 yards against them. I Absolutely. think that's what he Because you yeah. saw, you know, nowadays when the, the athletes, they transition to another team or they make their commit. Let's say you're in college, high school and you do your commitment video. They put out those social media videos. He had the 50 cent going on in the background. The mini man, it went from blue to the green. The way he's shown up. Let's say the last three training camps, you know he's going to be in shape. You know he's going to have a chip on his shoulder. So it's going to be something to – that first game, Paul, that's going to be circled. And if the NFL, if they want primetime ratings, that has to be a Monday night football game, the first game of the season, if you can. But to go quickly go back to Saquon and Tiki, I would love for those two – to do some sort of special where they sit down and they talk this thing out. Because I do not believe that Tiki meant any sort of ill will. Like, he would, oh, you're dead to me. Don't come see that sort of thing. Like you said, I think he was, because he was on the radio show and he had to kind of speak for a part of the base, the fan base that was uh, that was listening, and, and probably and do, does feel that way because he went to a division rival. I would like those two to sit down and really hash it out because that whole don't smile when you see me thing, like, 
I don't want Saquon to leave and then people be like, oh, you can never come back here. You can never retire as a giant, you know, that sort of thing. Because as we know, the type of teammate he was, the face of the franchise during times where they weren't winning, they're at the bottom of the NFL when it came to things. And he, he handled himself as a consummate pro. I don't want that mess. I don't want that Saquon uh, to get to get uh, lost throughout all of it. But at the end of the day, <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, true. Just, yeah. just like, just like when, um, um, you know, when when Saquon uh, tweeted back at Tiki and said, "You've been a hater since I got here." Yeah, that is not true. That's yeah. not true. No, you know, no. Now, Saquon, you know, Tiki Barber has not has not, you know, praised every carry and every, you know, every catch or every drop pass that Saquon has had, but he has not been a hater. And look, Saquon was feeling it, right? He was feeling yeah. happy and sad, and you know, just yeah. just he had a lot in him. And it's just like in anything when you do in life, Brandon, right? Sometimes you lash out not at the person who, you know, you just need one little opening. And, you know, he had to lash out at somebody, Saquon. And Cheeky gave him that perfect opening to, to get yeah. some of that out and get some of that, you know, leaving the Giants angst out. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I, I agree. And, and look, they're, they're, they're both two classy, smart guys. It should not end this way. Yeah. It's, it is unfortunate. It's, it's um, you know, it, maybe it's a lesson for everybody. Be more careful what you say. Um, be, be more careful what you post on social media and let's, you know, let's have a meeting of the minds and not let, you know, emotions uh, affect something like that. Yeah, you know, I felt like Saquon when I, after my rookie year when the Giants wanted to put me back on the practice squad but the Dolphins came and claimed me off waivers you know, I, I should have done one of those mini men. I put some put something on my Instagram back in the day, but there was no Instagram back in the day, Paul. Uh, let's move on. This is Xavier McKinney another guy who I didn't think he would be here. Uh, I didn't think he was going to Green Bay all the way out in the sticks, but he got paid. Xavier McKinney to the Packers. What was your initial thoughts, Paul? Well, good team, right? Good yeah. team. Good, good good fan base, you know, a sto historic, you know, franchise. But, you know, you and I both know Xavier McKinney and his flat fashion and his style and his, you know, he wants and, – and, yeah, Green Bay, uh, Wisconsin in um, November and December is um, – you know, his style is going to be a, a, a you know, a, a Canada Goose Park, I think, right? <laughs> um, you know, I mean, just the way it is, right? No That's Balenciaga boots in Green Bay? Uh, uh, it, uh, uh, do, are they waterproof? They're probably, if they're <laughs> waterproof, okay. If not, no good, right? Snowproof, saltproof, all that stuff. Um, you know what? This is a case of you know, the Giants negotiated with him, and I was told they felt they were in a good place with Xavier McKinney wow. after they spoke. But, but they knew they couldn't keep him off the open market, okay? And, and they could have put the transition tag on him and just said, look, go get a deal, and we have the right to match. And even if they did that, they would not have matched this deal that the Packers gave him. But at least it would have given the Giants a little bit of, you know, um, um, you know we have the last say here. And I was told um, um, Xavier McKinney did come back to the Giants after he got this deal. Um, the bottom line is it's positional value to the core. The Giants were not spending $17 million a year yeah. on a safety, period. Just like they weren't going to spend $12 million a year on a running back, even if it's Saquon Barkley. Um, so they weren't going to do it. I think the Giants thought they had a shot at McKinney only if the market didn't bear out something, you know, to go over like $14 million a year or $13 million a year. Um, and it wasn't going to happen. You know, Xavier McKinney's 24 years old. He's an ascending player. Um, is he a difference maker? You know, is he... Is he one of the three or four or five best safeties in the league? He could be. I don't he think be. he is right now. But you're paying for a little bit of what he's done and what you think. Look, he, he's been, he was healthy last year. He played every snap along with Bobby O'Karake, you know, and, and I can see him being attractive to another player. But this is, um, yeah, I mean, the, the beginning of free agency, it was Saquon goes and McKinney goes, and you're like, okay, um, these are two of the better players in um, on the field and certainly – um, strong voices in the locker room. They're both gone. Now what are the Giants going to do? And um, But the Giants were braced for it because they knew they're just not going to pay these guys at those positions what that market for. So you just you just led me into my next question. They just let go or allowed two guys, two productive guys, two guys big in production, two big voices in that locker team room. Captain, team captains. And team captains. What yeah. message did Joe Shane send to not only the locker room, but the fan base by allowing those two guys to walk? Well, you know, the message is not like, you know, we're getting rid of everybody and we don't like those guys and they were problems. The message is that I am going to build this team the way I think is important. Now, yep. 
it kind of went backwards a little bit, Brandon, because everyone believe, assumed, rightly so, this was a rebuild when Joe Shane and Brian Dable took over in 2022. And then, lo and behold, they win nine games and win a playoff game. And I don't think Shane and Dable looked at each other and said, we are a lot better than we thought. You know, they yeah. realized they won a lot of close games, things went their way, and things could have, you know, nine wins could have been six wins, and, and it wouldn't have been that much different. Uh, but because they had that success, they said, you know what, we should probably bring Daniel back. We should, you know, try to re-sign Saquon, things like that. Um, but they know that this is a, 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 a work in progress here, and, and Joe Shane is telling you, I'm going to invest in wide receivers, defensive players who can rush the passer, cornerbacks, um, you know, those are the positions. Ed Rushers, like I mentioned, and we'll see, we'll talk about these later moves they yeah. made. That's where the NFL thinks the money should go. And just because Xavier McKinney is on the market and he's one of our better players doesn't mean I'm going to bust my positional value grid and pay a safety more than I think he's worth. And also, um, you know, same thing with running back. So that the message is, is, is you know, and, and I, I think, you know, the locker room, look, Kayvon Thibodeau spoke up, uh, uh, um, you know, last month about, um, you know, Saquon and saying, um, you know, we got to, we got to, um, you know, pay him, right? We got to pay. He should have been paid before Daniel Jones. And, you know, my take on that, and I think I know that some of the people in the Giants front office take on it was, Kayvon, be careful what you wish for, because you're going to come to the table talking about positional value, right? Uh, as far as an edge rusher, positional value. And, you know, they're going to say to him, do you, do you want us to pay you what we paid Bobby Okereke? You know, ten million a year. He played every snap. He's very valuable to us, yeah. but he's an inside linebacker. So we're looking at quarterback as more positional value than running back. So if that counts for something, then don't say it can't count when you come to the table and say, "I'm an edge rusher. I got to get twenty million a year." And I think that was a message that Kayvon received. And after, as we'll talk about the Giants paying big money for Brian Burns, I'm sure Kayvon looked at that deal and said, "Man, I'm next." <laughs> well, let's get let's get right into that, because when we started off the news with Saquon and Xavier McKinney leaving, everyone was kind of upset. And it was kind of like that epi uh, that that scene from Dumb and Dumber when it was like, uh, just when I thought you couldn't do anything dumber, you totally redeemed yourself by <laughs> signing and trading for Brian Burns, uh, brought in John Runyon Jr., Devin Singletary, Jermaine uh, Ola. Ola you got the name, Paul, because you taught me how to say Okereke. Il Illuminor. Illuminor and Jalen Mills. Let's talk about the top uh, tier signings. Obviously, Brian Burns, let's start with this. Spider Burns, he was having all types of issues down there with the front office in Carolina. As we've seen, the ownership seems kind of inept uh, right now. Lands himself in New York, New Jersey. Kayvon gets someone on the outside to kind of help him out. Dexter Lawrence gets someone on the outside to kind of help him out, to free him up from not being triple teamed at times. I think this was a great signing, and it made sense. It made the not signing Saquon, re-signing Saquon and Xavier McKinney. That made sense by signing Brian Burns. You know, it's funny. I, I think after McKinney and, and Saquon left, right, I think the first thing they did was was John Runyon Jr. Yeah. You know, you know, talk about that. But, okay, that that was a, you know, a, a, a mid-level, you know, um, 10 million a year starting guard. And it was like, okay, that makes sense. But, you know, people are like, okay, we got rid of two stars and we got, a you know, a pretty good guard. You know, okay, that's not exactly, you know, moving the needle that much, even, although it makes the team better. Yes, and, and, you know, there were some rumblings during the day that, you know, Look, we knew the Panthers, um, they put the franchise tag on Brian Burns. That's $24 million a year. They wanted to franchise him so they could trade him. Uh, you know, the Panthers are, are, are really, really, really rebuilding, as usual. Um, as um, I talked to, uh, you know, Brian Balding, I talked to him the other day, and he said, the best thing to do in free agency is to go to the dumbest, worst teams out there and try to get their players. Because they'll, <laughs> always, do, they'll always do dumb things. Because that's why they're so bad. And um, now, um, so the Giants looked at this, and and you know you have to trade for this guy. So um, Brian Burns, the upside on him is he turns 26 next month, Brandon. He turns. He's still 25. He's young. He never misses games. Um, you know he's played on a team that what had a lead what 10 percent of the time, 15 percent of the time. So you look at the sack numbers and you say, really, we gave. 
141 million. It's really 141 million for five years, not 150. The 150 is like with some, you know, 9 million added in. So think of five for 141. He's the second highest paid defensive end in the league right now. Wow. Okay. So it's an overpay. I would say it's an overpay. Does he deserve to make more than, um, than Miles Garrett? No. No. Not right now. I can't. It, no, no, no. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. But it's free agency. So you overpay. That's why you have to be really careful in free agency. Um, but if you're going to overpay, overpay for a young guy who has been healthy, has no issues, and has an upside and played for a lousy team. But what did they give up? They gave up a second round pick, a fifth round pick next year, and they swapped um, fifth round picks this year. The Giants get like a pick, you know, further down than, and the Panthers get the better of the fifth round picks. So the Giants had two second round picks this year. Now they have one. So that basically, this is the deal the Giants got, gave up for Leonard Williams, right? A second and yep. a fifth, you know? So, so that's the way you look at it. Another way to look at it is, his APY, his average per year, Brandon Burns, is 27 and a half, which is what it would have cost the Giants and, and what, what Saquon and Xavier McKinney got if you add them up the APY. You so, so you say, what are you trading? You're trading um, a running back and a safety for a pass rusher at a premier position. Um, now, if you think of it, Brandon, right, you think of it, what do you want to do? You want to build a core, right? Brandon Burns is part of the core. Dexter Lawrence last year was signed. Did you see what Christian Wilkins got in free agency? Yeah, he got big money to go out to uh, Oakland. He's making more right, he than got, Max uh, Crosby. He got a hundred and what something <laughs> million, right? You know, so so this is why you have to do preemptive strikes. Joe Shane signed Dexter Lawrence for what ninety million? Yep. That is a bargain now for what Christian Wilkins got. You know, those are very comparable players. If not, Dexter's better. So um, you have Dexter Lawrence as a as a core guy for several years. You have Kayvon Thibodeau. You'll probably be signing him a core guy. You now have Brian Burns, core guy. Bobby Okereke, core guy. Deontay Banks, core guy. That's the heart of your defense, young, signed, um, you know, ready to rock. So that that's good. Um, yeah, I have – this was a really good, really good, borderline great trade for the Giants. Um, like I said, it's too much money, but it's what you pay for these guys. And um, – um, I bet he has more than eight sacks this year. You know, I bet he does because so he had eight sacks last year because um, as I, another thing, Brian Baldinger said, he said, I'll, he said, okay, I'm scouting. I'm, I'm, I'm watching tape on Brian Burns. Okay. And I'm watching the, um, the game against the lions last year. And it's 35, seven in the third quarter. He said, how many pass rush opportunities is Brian Burns yeah. going to have in that yeah. situation when you're losing? Now I looked it up. It was 28, 10. So Baldy was not 100% right, okay. but we get the point. Still, yeah, point. still, yeah, and, absolutely. And, and, and Kayvon would say the same thing, right? How many times could I pin my ear, backs, ear back and, and just, you know, we got a two-touchdown lead. They're throwing every down. I'm going to get some sacks here and hunt. Very rarely. And I'm seeing a trend here. 2007 Super Bowl team, 2011 Super Bowl team. They beefed up the defensive line. You look at the defensive line, getting after Tom Brady, getting after Aaron Rodgers, getting after Brett Favre. You have to, like my dad, my dad, college football coach, since I was a kid, he said you have to wreck the decision maker. So that was a great move uh, on Joe Shane bringing in a Brian Burns. Uh, he also addressed the offensive line with Runyon Jr. and uh, Jermaine. Is the offensive line finally fixed, uh, in the words of uh, David Gettleman? No, it's not no. fixed, but it, um, um, you went from an open wound that's bleeding, right? And, and, and now you put a little bit of a, a gauze on there and a tourniquet and you stop the bleeding. No, I mean, John Runyon is a starter. He, you know, uh, the one thing about him, we talked about young, um, three years, 30 million. Now, the, the Robert Hunts and the Jack Jackson from the Lions, um, certainly um, Landon Dickerson, you know, those are a higher tier of player in most people's minds, and they got way more money. So the Giants weren't shopping there. John Runyon is a very solid player. He's never missed a game in, what, four years? Yep. Um, you know, those Michigan guys, um, I think he gave up two sacks last year. Very good pass protector. Very smart. He's not a star. He's not a guy you're going to build your offensive line around. You know what? If he's your best offensive lineman, you're in trouble. If he's your, you know, fourth or fifth offensive lineman, terrific. And that's not a knock against him. You know, you don't have five stars. You know, Rich Soybert was not a star on the 
on the um, offensive line for the yeah. Giants. You know, Kevin Booth was not a star. They were good players who filled their role and were dependable and tough and, and you know, was smart. And that's what you need. This guy fits that bill. Um, you know, I remember, do you remember uh, John Runyon, the offensive tackle uh, who played for the Eagles? Uh, you, you are too young for that. You remember No, him? I was around for those Strahan days, those yeah. Strahan battles. Yep. And you saw Michael Strahan kind of tweet out. <laughs> <laughs> For everything comes full circle in the NFL, you know. He, he tweeted out like yep. a, a clip of him saying, "What are you saying? Like, you know, you can't stop me, or yep. you can't, yep. me. you know. I mean, these, these guys are unbelievable. You know what yep. I mean? I mean, I mean. And John Rudd, you became a U.S. what congressman or senator? He's a terrific guy. They're friends now. You know, you know, Strahan." routinely clean John Runyon's clock back in those days, you know, and, you know, Runyon would hold him and grab him. And all these years later, you know, you know, Strahan is welcoming in his son, John Runyon Jr. to the Giants and has to re remind everyone that, yeah, I used to, you know, you know, kick butt on, on his father. You know, these guys are too much. They never yeah. stopped competing. It's, it was very funny, but um, he's a good player. And yeah. um, uh, uh, Illuminor, he started the last two years of right tackle for the Raiders. Um, at the very least, he's depth, and at the very um, at the best, he's going to start somewhere. He can also play guard. And I'll tell you one thing: you see his Twitter account. Um, oh, he he lo he wanted to come here. You, oh my gosh, his Twitter. He's just so thankful, so appreciative of being a giant. I think he said what he like dreamt of it or something. Yeah, he said he said the first game he remembers what it tells you how old I feel. He said the first game he remembers seeing as at, at, at NFL was the Giants against the Dolphins in London in 2007. Wow. So I guess that's about right, right? Wow. So that's, yeah. you know, yeah, he's a young kid. He watched the game, um, and he fell in love with it, he said. I was at that game, okay? It was pouring. It was the first ever game in London. It was at Wembley Stadium. I know you're a soccer fan, right? It was at the, you know, historic Wembley Stadium, um, home of the FA Cup, right? right? Yeah. I'm not getting too, too uh, crazy with soccer here. And um, the, the quarterback for the Dolphins was the immortal – Cleo, Cleo Lemon. Lemon. They were terrible. The Dolphins were winless. They was like 0-7. The Giants beat them 17 to 10. Um, a, a Giants quarterback, who I believe name was Eli Manning, ran for a ran touchdown. Ran for a TD. Okay. Yeah. And and they won 17-10. It was a boring game, rainy game, and that was the first game in London. So yeah, Illuminor. I mean, you know, he got two years, 14 million. If if the Giants knew then what they know now about how excited he was to come to the Giants, they might have got him for less money. <laughs> he, he has been, I mean, it, it's fun to see a guy, oh, he said, I'm going to, that's 72, I'm going to look blue, I can't wait, I can't wait. Um, it's 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 um, it's a lot of fun. You know, it, it's good. And he's he's a pretty good player. Rounding out that, uh, that tier one was Devin Singletary and Jalen Mills. I think Devin Singletary is a guy that is kind of like a placeholder type thing. He's not going to have the same production as a Sa Saquon, Saquon Barkley, but you draft. You bring somebody in. Jalen Mills, I believe that he competes with either Jason Pinnock or Dane Belton for one of those starting safety spots. Uh, defensive coordinator, you told me this, Shane Bowen has produced two pro bowlers, Kevin Byard and Malik Hooker at the safety position. So that's going to be an interesting matchup in that defensive secondary to kind of keep an eye on. Let's quickly run through these tier two guys because a lot of uh, people want to know what your thoughts are on Drew Locke, Isaiah McKenzie, and them re-signing uh, wide receiver slash punt returner Gunnar Ozlowski. Oh, well, I would say first, I, I would I would not agree with your tier system from what you just said, okay? Okay. Um, Singletary is is the first tier. He's your starting running back. I yeah, mean, I had him in there. Run. I had him in there. I just yeah, had to quickly. Yeah, I'm saying he okay. is Jalen Mills. Jalen Mills is not. You know what I mean? Okay. Follow the money, Brandon. Follow the money. Okay. He's getting okay. One point two million. It's a uh, veteran minimum. You know, he counts nine hundred and eighty thousand against the cap. Jalen Mills is a guy they brought in. He's versatile. He's twenty nine years old. Um, he has to make the team. You know what I mean? I mean, mm. I'm not saying he's not going to make the team, but I, they did not sign him and say. He's going to be a replacement for Xavier McKinney as a starting safety. He's a guy they think can help. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. you know, you follow the money. You're not going to you say Xavier McKinney left for 17. We're bringing a guy in for one. He's going to replace him. You know, I, I don't see that. And and Singletary, I think, is, I mean, you know, what's his nickname? You know his nickname? No. Motor. Motor. Um, you know, every, everybody I talk says motor. Motor Singletary. Motor. He's he's a good player. Yeah. You know, he's five foot seven, 200 pounds. He's a He's a he's a powerful guy. So, um, you know, and look, 
Shane and Dable had him in Buffalo, and they brought him back. So um, I'm not saying he's Saquon Barkley, but for a fraction of the money, three years, 16, um, you know, 16 and a half million dollars, he's he's a guy who I think, you know, you fix the offensive line. He in tandem can work really well. Now, as far as the other guys, um, you look, Drew Locke, we knew, Joe Shane told us we're going to sign a, a backup quarterback, right? Um, um, we have Tommy DeVito and we have Daniel Jones coming off an ACL. We need another quarterback. To me, it was what caliber of backup are they going to sign? Are they going to sign a Gardner Minshew? You know, are they going to bring Tyrod back? Are they going to, you know, sign, you know, they sign Gardner Minshew and, you know, people will say he's better than Daniel. You know, yeah. um, you sign Tyrod, um, you know, Tyrod got two years and up to 18 million from the Jets. OK, so they're serious about a backup quarterback, knowing Aaron Rodgers is one bad step away from going down again at his advanced age. Um, Drew Locke got five, five million guaranteed. So he'll, he'll be on the team. There's this guaranteed money, yeah. five million. You know, not 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 nothing, but not a significant amount of money. Uh, Drew Locke's 27 years old. They feel he has upside. Um, he's what um, a nine and 14 as a starter. You know, it's not all his fault. Uh, 23 career starts. Um, look, most fans. Um, he throws a bunch of interceptions, right? He, his touchdowns, interceptions are you know 28 and 23, something like that. They're way too close for comfort. But most fans remember last year on national TV. Um, what the um, Seahawks are down to the yeah. Eagles. Um, Giants fans are watching that game, rooting against the Eagles, of course. And Drew Locke leads them on a you know long 90-yard drive, throws a touchdown pass, um, you know to uh, Jackson, um, you know uh, Smith, right? Um, and um, um, how do you say his whole name? Jackson. And Jackson um, Smith and Jigba. In Jigba, right? Throws a touchdown pass in the last second. Um, you know he he's thrilled. He gets interviewed. So. Um, I think he's an okay backup, you know, he's, yeah. he's, he's, you know what, he's a gunslinger, you know? Yeah. And so uh, if, if, if Daniel is not ready, they think it will be, can he start? Yeah. He started a game before he can start. Um, I don't think he's your long-term solution. And, and one thing, this does not mean that they're not going to draft the quarterback in the draft. You know, it doesn't mean they are, it doesn't mean they're not. Well, you know, hold there, they, Paul, uh, hold there, hold there. Cause we got some fans that want to ask you oh, some questions about that before we get in too deep on this okay. one. Uh, right, we're going to try something new. We're trying to, I love the creativity that we're doing with Blue Rush. I asked some Giants fans to send in the video with their questions and thoughts about free agency yeah. and direction of Big Blue and the Giants, where they're headed. We're going to call this Ask Paul or Ask the Schwartz. It's a working title, everybody. Uh, <laughs> first up, we've got longtime Giants fan Jasmine sing hello paul and brandon thank you for taking my thoughts and a question uh, so far i like what giants are doing in the free agency uh sensible uh, spending and not spending too much uh, i really like the signing of burns that brings the spark into our pass rush uh, so the question that i want to ask paul today is uh with the signing of like two uh, offensive linemen that we signed yesterday. Uh, how does that fit in with Evan Neal's uh, position in the offensive line? It's an excellent question. It definitely fits in. It definitely fits in. You know, Joe Shane drafted Evan Neal number seven, right? But the the the, the you know it, it, the the jury is not out on him. But um, Joe Shane is telling you after last year. We're not going into this year with Evan Neal. You're our starting right tackle. You know, go get it again. He's saying you want to be starting right tackle. You've got to go earn it. And um, as you mentioned, Jermaine Illuminor has w was a better right tackle last year than Evan Neal was. Period. He was more durable. He was a better player. Um, is he a better player for the long term? We don't know that. But so Illuminor right now, at the very least, is a um, swing tackle and and a guy who can go play guard. Okay, that's at the very least. Um, at the most, he is going to come in and compete every snap in the spring and summer with Evan Neal. Now, Evan Neal is coming off ankle surgery, so he may be slowed a little bit, you know, as we get into this. But um, I would expect that to be a serious competition in the summer. OK, serious like Illuminor is with the starters today. Um, Neal's with the starters tomorrow. Um, first series, um, you know, uh, with the ones on uh, Tuesday, uh, Neal's the starter. Second series. A luminous a starter, and then they flip flop. You know, I think it's a competition because these guys are fighting for jobs. Front office is fighting, you know, to stay around here, and so that's a serious question. And if Illuminor is clearly the better player, 
I believe he will start. So they're not throwing Evan Neal out the door. They're saying earn it. Um, and as far as, well, let's just move inside um, um, Evan Neal to guard. I don't think that's their thinking right now. Um, I've talked to a few former offensive linemen who said they don't see it. They don't see him just naturally. His footwork is not there. His body type is not there. So I don't, I'm not saying that will never happen, but that's not like I don't think the Giants thinking, um, um, you know what, we'll just move him inside, and now we have our five best guys. I don't think that's the case. And don't forget the new Giants um, offensive line coach, I believe, coached Illuminor um, at a previous stop. So I think, you know, he knows him well. So, um, you know, um, they like the player. And look, I mean, $7 million a year, two years, $14 million is not nothing. You know, he's a guy they expect to play. All right, next up, from across the pond in the U.K., we have Tony Little. Hi, Brandon. Hi, Paul. Um, my question is in regard to our quarterback situation. Um, I like Daniel Jones. He's a good lad, but the injury status at the moment, um, I'm thinking we're entering into a period of transition. Now, do you think the one-year deal for Drew Locke, uh, we'll be looking into getting a quarterback in the draft to learn behind these guys and then hopefully moving into them in a couple of years' time? Or are we looking at potentially seeing what Drew Locke has uh, or Tommy Cutlet even? What 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 do you think is going to happen at quarterback? Thanks very much. Uh, Brandon, i got a problem with this one. Um, have, have we vetted this guy properly from uh, the UK? Yeah, I've been to his house before. I shot a fan cave there. Flynn B. Do we? UK, yep. Yeah, do we know if he is an Arsenal fan or oh, a Liverpool fan? I thought we said or, we were going to talk soccer. Or, 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 or a Tottenham fan. Do we know what he is? Do we know what he is? Because if he's a Tottenham fan, I don't know if I want to answer his question. But um, All right. And, and I don't think he's a Chelsea fan, right? Because I think most Chelsea people have given up on that team. Is that, would that be correct? No, Kick no, a man okay, while no. they're down, Paul. Kick a man while they're down. All right. Um, you no, know, it is a good question. And it, it, look, it was the first thing I thought of once they, when I was thinking, who are they going to sign as a um, backup quarterback? You know, what is this going to mean to the draft and the possibility of drafting a quarterback? The answer in this one is nothing. Nothing. Like I said, Drew Locke, one year, five million guaranteed. It's one year. So um, if, if Daniel Jones is not ready or if he turns an ankle in, in the third game, Drew Locke can come in and start. Uh, the Giants are serious about um, thinking about drafting a quarterback, and they have the number six pick. They did not expect to be that high. They hope they're not that high again. When you have a pick that high, it is incumbent upon you to think about quarterback if you don't have one. Um, you know, the Giants still like Daniel Jones. They are afraid of his injury history now. You know, don't forget when Joe Shane signed Daniel Jones to that big contract, um, Daniel Jones had one neck issue, which had been resolved, supposedly. Since they signed that contract, He's had another neck issue and an ACL. Mm. So he was not damaged goods before then. Now he has to be viewed as damaged goods. So the Giants are wondering, is he a good enough player? And can he stay healthy? So quarterback is in the, in the running. Um, I still don't know at six how it's feasible. I don't see a trade-up is going to happen, especially now that they've given up their second-round pick, one of them for, for Brian Burns. They don't have that firepower to come up. Um, first of all, I don't see any of the three teams in one, two, three. Um, you know, you have um, the Bears, the Commanders, and the Patriots. They all need to draft quarterbacks, and I think they all will. So I don't see how you can get up there anyway. Um, it would cost a fortune to get up there. Um, I don't see at number six how you can sit there and take Bo Nix or J.J. McCarthy or Michael Penix. I don't think he's value there um, when you have, you know, we'll talk about this on a later podcast, but, yeah. you know, I know you're a wide receiver guy. Um, these guys are, I mean, these three guys, uh, they, they're – I mean, there might be six or seven of them, you know, you know, maybe guy, you know, six or seven is going to be better than all of them. Yep. These guys are legit. They These play. guys are they, neighbors from LSU. Um, Roma Dunze, I went to the, the combine. I mean, I wanted a, I wanted to vote for him for mayor of my town. Uh, you know, he is he is sounds fantastic. And we all know Marvin Harrison Jr. is terrific. So those guys are fantastic. So the Giants get one of those guys. It, it can be franchise diff changing like Odell was. So I don't know where they you know, maybe do they trade up back into, you know, trade up into the first round and try to get, you know, one of these guys, you know, one of the other guys. I don't know. But quarterback is definitely not something to be dismissed. But Drew Locke signing has nothing to do with that. All right. So we got some important dates that are coming up. Uh, 
Paul, final thoughts. Close us out. Um, you know, look, the, the first few days was a frenzy. I think that's kind of, you know, lessening now. Um, we will hear from Joe Shane, um, Brian Dable, and co-owner John Mara um, later this month at the um, NFL owners meetings in Orlando. I will be on site there. So that will be interesting. Certainly, um, Shane has spoken, you know, at the Combine and at the uh, Senior Bowl, both places I was. Um, uh, Brian Dable has not spoken since then, since the end of the season. Then um, um, John Mara has not spoken since, um, I don't know when, since the end of the last season, I guess. You know, he didn't speak uh, at the after this season. So um, or maybe the last time at the owners' meetings is the last time he really spoke at any great length. So very interesting to see what John Mara has to say. Um, but yeah, this is this is the end of the of, of the the first stage of free agency as far as the Giants are concerned. I'm not saying they're not going to pick up a guy here or two. One thing we didn't talk about is Darren Waller is contemplating retirement. Okay, so next time we do a podcast, we'll probably have um, clarity to what goes on there. You know, that's something to monitor and where they go as far as picking up another tight end. Um, but the Giants did well. The Giants did well for a team that knew they were going to lose Saquon, figured they probably would lose Xavier McKinney. They picked up an edge rusher. They picked up a starting guard. They picked up a starting running back for very reasonable money. So I think it was a very good, um, pretty sober start to free agency for the Giants. All right, we want to thank you guys for watching this free agency edition of Blue Rush. Keep the conversation going and the at mentions flowing. For Paul Schwartz, I'm Brandon London. Thanks for watching. 